Hi, in this video, I want to show how I use the Omniverse Stage Actor to reference my USD files from NVIDIA USD Composer, which I use to build my layouts, and then render them inside Unreal Engine. There's nothing too magic about this workflow. Uh, I'm just going to show you how I approach it. There's dozens of ways you could do this. Um, but here, of course, we see USD Composer. This is a rebranded NVIDIA USD Create. Um, and then, of course, Unreal Engine on this side. Um, the only other thing that you need to make sure you've got installed, and you can do this from the NVIDIA launcher, is grab the connector. And so you'll see I've got the Epic Games uh, Unreal 5.2 connector installed. There's connectors basically for every DCC you might want to use. All the different versions of Unreal are here. Um, so choose the corresponding one. And pretty much any other DCC uh, you, would, you might want to use is here as well. Um, so you take, you know, use Rhizome. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, OK, so once you have your NVIDIA connector installed, um, you'll see this new icon on your um, taskbar. Uh, I'm just going to fix the scaling real quick here. Is that done real? Okay, so here's your Nucleus server. Um, you connect to your local Nucleus server's local host is probably what you've got, unless you're storing it off on another uh, device. Um, but this is the entire uh, folder structure inside of the content browser in Unreal. Um, and you're going to see that this matches exactly with USD Composer. They're both connected to the same Nucleus server. Um, and so you can see the folder structures match exactly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up an empty USD scene here, and we're just going to get started. Let's take our empty USD file and let's load in an asset. We're just going to grab this sunflower model. Okay. And this is just the geometry. It's just got a basic uh, shader on it. So that's the geometry. And then separate from that, we're going to load in another USD that's going to contain our look dev. Now, on my machine, sometimes this is a, a render error that happens with the RTX real time. Um, so it's probably something I can do to fix it. But generally, I'm just switch it to interactive path tracing and uh, everything uh, renders as it should. Um, since I'm mostly rendering out of Unreal, this isn't a big uh, issue for me. Okay, so now that we've got a sunflower here, very basic stuff, um, we want to go ahead and save this out as a USD. I'm just going to use this sunflower A demo. Okay, hey, now let's jump over to Unreal. We'll attempt to load this in and we'll get an error, but uh, I'll show you how to fix that. Again, here's our Nucleus server. And if you come down to Projects, Sunflower, and down here we'll see the Sunflower demo file that we just saved. And you might want to try just dragging the USD file into the scene, but that's not actually going to load the content. That's not, Unreal is not set up to, to read the USD files that way. We'll just delete both of these. And what we actually need is an Omniverse stage actor. This is going to be the actor that's responsible for reading the external USD file and loading the contents. This is a fairly simple actor. Um, it's just going to have one drop down that's going to list all of the potential USD files that it can find on the Nucleus server. And you just select the one that you want to load. Sometimes if you don't see your particular USD file uh, in the list right away, um, I sometimes have to navigate to the file in the content browser and just kind of click on it. Um, and that generally refreshes the list so you can come back and uh, you should see everything updated and you should be able to, to select your USD. 
Okay, this is our Sunflower A demo, and we're going to load this in. We're going to attempt to load this in. It's going to not work, but I'll show you the problem and how to fix it. Okay, we've pointed the USD stage actor, the Omniverse stage actor, to the correct USD file, and nothing is coming through into our uh, Unreal scene. So why is that? So the first thing we're going to want to try and do is just come back over to USD Composer and let's load the USD file there and see if we can see any issues. And we can see right away on loading that these two references are broken inside the USD file. So they're highlighted in red. We're simply going to come down here and relink them to the appropriate uh, reference. Okay, that's our look dev file. And here's our asset file. There's that render bug again, because um, we loaded a new file, it switched back to the default rendering mode. But... Okay, now when we come back into Unreal, um, you'll see that as soon as I click in the software, we're getting this warning that, hey, the USD file has been updated. Um, so it's keeping a live link to that USD. It's watching it, and it knows that there's there's new unloaded updates. Um, and we're just going to click F, and we're going to bring in those changes. And it's going to do that every time uh, a change is noticed. And now we can see our sunflower inside Unreal. Oh, and it crashed. Okay, I will be right back. And we're back. Uh, I ran out of video memory there. I had a very large scene open inside Blender, um, so that was uh, taxing the system. So we reconnected and saved out our USD file. Let's load in uh, that USD again using a new Omniverse uh, stage actor inside the Unreal Engine. Let's just quickly add a HDRI backdrop to this so we get a little bit of light and we can see what's happening a little bit clearer. There is another workflow uh, using called a live session between the two, uh, USD Composer and Unreal. That's not what I mean when I say live in this sense. But of course, we can see all of our layers, and if we make changes, we can send them back to Composer. So if we go ahead and make a minor adjustment like this, and we can save the file. We just right-click, save it. Then USD Composer will notice those updates to the USD file. Now you'll see, hey, this file has been updated. And we can click Fetch, and USD Composer will reflect the changes. And in real time, you can just reload uh, that file to, to import any adjustments made by another teammate. Of course, it works the same way over here as well. If we take this sunflower and move it back to the origin like this, and we'll just save this out, we'll be able to reload it in Unreal uh, very easily. Statements. And then, of course, fetch inside Unreal. And we can continue working with the files normally. We can alt drag off of this model and create a duplicate. Um, and if we save that, it will, of course, be reflected in the USD file. And we can load that back inside the USD Composer. 
There is a slight difference here about the way this data is recorded, um, and that has to do with the deltas and the authoring layer that we have set. I'm not going to go too much into how USD files work in this video. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of layout into our scene. And the way to do that in a USD is we're going to add, we're going to contain that information or those deltas on a separate layer. Now I'm going to load in a layout file that I've already got, and you can see right off the top that something looks unusual. The orientation is incorrect, and that's because USD files all contain reference to their own up access. Now once we modify this, we'll still need to rotate our geometry into position, as USD Composer is going to assume we want to keep our geometry exactly the way it is. So we can select our plane, come down to the transforms, rotate this by 90 degrees, putting it into the proper position. So that's looking much more normal. We can go ahead and save this, add a quick commit note. Once we come over to Unreal, of course, it's going to flag that there have been changes to the USD file. And if we want to load those in, I've actually still got a floor piece of geometry in the Unreal scene. We'll just remove that. Now we can go ahead and use some of the layout tools inside of USD Composer. These are not always going to be exactly what you need, but I do want to highlight that there's lots of great tools here, and it could be a very powerful workflow. If this is how you want to approach world building. Right here, for instance, this is the array tool, a very simple but infinitely useful tool for layout team. Now, of course, you can see that we've got 10 sunflower duplicates. Um, they are only duplicates on the model, but I actually want all of these changes to be contained in the layout USD file um, in the in the layer stack. So we're going to just click and drag those changes down. So again, here we've gone ahead and we've made the changes. The, we duplicated the model 10 times, but now we have the data. So we can go from our authoring layer, we can say we're happy with what we've achieved, but we want to store that data in the appropriate place, which will be the layout file on the Nucleus server. I'll also click and drag and move the rotation for the plane down to our layout USD file as well. And we just need to get our look dev onto all of our new duplicates. So very easily we can just select the here and set the details pane for each model. Of course, we can select multiples at the same time as well, either in the viewport or in the outliner for the scene. And then just come to the drop down and select the appropriate shader. Now let's go ahead and save this and pop back over to Unreal Engine and see that all the changes load in. So of course we'll fetch our updated USD file. We'll take a look. Some things are off. Oh yeah, we have uh, saved these in the incorrect folder. So we just have to update and load in the, the actual layout file uh, after we've moved data down from the authoring layer. So we can just click the save icon here. And once we do that, move back over to Unreal, fetch our updates, and we should see everything pop into. There we go, popping into place. We've got our nice array of sunflowers, and all the look dev is being applied. And of course, the plane is rotated and oriented correctly inside the USDC. Now, of course, if we want to make any more changes on the Unreal side, uh, we're free to select these models, move them like, orient them like, and then it's very easy to, of course, save that USD on the Nucleus server. If those changes would be available to any of our coworkers working in any DCC package. So we'll just click save, and then of course, fetch the updates, and everything is updated correctly. And that's probably the most basic and straightforward uh, way to use USD files uh, across DCC platforms. 
And there are other ways to live servers uh, that are both referencing the files live that might not be as useful for in a studio setting. And I might do a video on that in the future. And I guess the last thing to mention here is that these are not actually imported into our project or Unreal Engine. These are not You can check that out if you were to select one of these and control the B, which should take us to the file in the uh, content browser. Uh, it's, it's, it's not going to find anything. And so if we do want to load these in, and convert them to U assets and for distribution, we can do that. So of course, right click, import USD. It's gonna ask us to choose a folder where we want to store this new data. At this point, this is the point where it's creating U assets and they need to be stored somewhere in the content uh, uh, hierarchy. So we just simply select the path, some of these options. Generally, you can just leave these as default. Um, and yep, import, it's going to save our scene. This import might take a little bit of time depending on how complex your scene is, how many models, how many textures, but it's very simple. And now these files are actually U assets. Um, so we can select them. We can see them in the outliner. You see they have the static mesh um, object type. And we can open them up in the static mesh viewer. And so these are exactly just ordinary assets at this point. And of course, I guess one more thing is to mention is that you can export an entire level or scene into the USD format, um, which then, of course, you can send that to USD Composer. So if you import everything and make modifications, that's no longer going to be reflected live in your USD file. You're going to need to export a new USD file uh, in order to continue with a cross-DCC workflow.